Hey guys, today we are going to look at operations with polynomials to check these answers. If your problem only has one variable, then once you simplify it, you can graph the original problem and the answer to make sure that they have the same graph. So we'll do that here in a minute. Let's start with adding and subtracting polynomials though. To add and subtract, you first of all want to look for addition or subtraction. There will be addition or subtraction separating your terms or the groups. You may need to distribute first if necessary, then we will combine like terms. So let's look at this first one. I am subtracting this group from this one. You could go through and think 10a minus 2ab, negative 4bc minus 3bc, but that's just too many signs for me to keep straight in my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this negative instead. It's really an invisible negative one that I'm distributing. And then I am going to rewrite this polynomial with the distributed negative sign underneath this one so it's easier to combine like terms. So that positive 2ab becomes negative 2ab. That positive 3bc becomes negative 3bc. And then the negative 7ac becomes positive 7ac. And now I can just combine like terms. 10ab minus 2ab is 8ab. Negative 4bc minus 3bc is negative 7bc. And then 7ac, negative 7ac plus 7ac is a zero pair, so that zeroes out. So the final answer is 8ab minus 7bc. And since I have multiple variables, I cannot graph this. You would just want to go through and double check that you did all your calculations correctly. Let's look at this next one. So first thing I'm gonna do is clear the parentheses. I'm gonna rewrite this three X squared because that does not have anything distributed to it. And then this group is in parentheses, but there's nothing distributed to it. It's just a plus sign in front of it. So I can go ahead and clear those parentheses. Plus two X minus four X squared. And then I'll bring down the plus 10. Okay, this group does have something to distribute to it. I'm gonna go ahead and distribute that negative to both things inside the parentheses. So that'll become negative seven X minus two. Now I am ready to combine like terms. I'm going to start with the X squareds since those would come first in standard form and three X squared minus four X squared is negative X squared. And then the X's would come next. 2X minus 7X is negative 5X. And then 10 minus 2 is 8. So that expression simplified to negative X squared minus 5X plus 8. Okay, now I'm going to check this. I'm going to type the original expression in the first line. 3X squared plus 2X minus 4x squared plus 10 minus 7x plus 2. Just going to double check I did that correctly. Okay. And it looks like it makes this parabola. So now I'm going to graph my answer and make sure that it makes the same parabola. Negative x squared minus 5x plus 8 and they match so I know that I did this correctly. So you can check your answers like that anytime there is only one variable, like this one only had X's. So that is adding and subtracting polynomials. Now let's move on to multiplying. The first type of multiplication we could encounter is a monomial times a polynomial. So just one term times many terms. This is different than adding and subtracting because there's going to be a term directly in front of the parentheses with no plus or minus sign in between them. Like right here, that's how I know I'm multiplying. There's no plus or minus sign in between the negative 8x and the parentheses. We will distribute this term to each term in the polynomial. So let's start with this one. Negative 8x times 7x is negative 56x squared and negative 8x times negative 4 is positive 32x. So there is the simplified expression. 
Okay, this one I am going to distribute the negative 8 ninths here, but I will just rewrite the 8n squared and the 3n squared because those are not being multiplied. So let's bring down the 8n squared and negative 8 ninths times 18 is negative 16. So that'll be negative 16n and then negative 8 ninths times negative 2. I'm going to change it to a fraction and I get positive 16 over 9. And then plus 3n squared. And now that I've distributed, I'm just going to combine like terms. 8n squared plus 3n squared is 11n squared. And then next in standard form would be any of the n terms, which is just negative 16n. And then I bring it down at the plus 16 over 9. So there is the final simplified answer. Okay, let's look at another multiplication scenario, and this is a polynomial times a polynomial. The most common mistake with these is not multiplying enough. You're going to have to distribute each term in the first group to each term in the second group. Um, and you will know that this is multiplication because again there will not be any plus or minus sign in between the parentheses. So like I said you're going to distribute each term in the first polynomial to each term in the second polynomial. The two methods that we went over were FOIL and BOX. FOIL you can only use with a binomial times a binomial. So I'm going to use FOIL on this one. Remember it's just the pattern that helps you know what to multiply. So we do first times first, x times 2x is 2x squared. Outer times outer, x times 5 is 5x. Inner negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x. And then last, negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. And then we would combine like terms, and I get 2x squared minus 7x minus 30. And this is great to check on Desmos if you want to type in the original answer and the or the original problem and the answer and make sure that they graph the same thing. Okay, on this one I have a binomial times a trinomial, so FOIL is not going to work, so I'm going to use the box instead. I'm going to draw a 2 by 3 box. And x plus 2 will go there, and then x squared minus 3x plus 6 will go here. So x times x is x to the third, x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared, x times 6 is 6x. And then I'm going to multiply the bottom row, 2 times x squared is 2x squared, 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x, and 2 times 6 is 12. And now I'm going to write my final answer in standard form, so first I'll have the x to the third, and then I will combine the x squareds and 2x squared minus 3x squared is negative x squared. And then I will combine the x's and 6x and a negative 6x is a zero pair, so those zero out. And then I just have this positive 12. So there is the final answer. Okay, so we've added, subtracted, multiplied, now we are going to divide. So when you're dividing, you need to check if you're dividing by a monomial or dividing by a polynomial because that is going to determine how you divide. When you divide by a monomial, so just one term, you just divide each term in the polynomial by the monomial. And if you're dividing by a polynomial, so more than one term, you're going to have to use a long division. So let's look at this one right here. It says the area of a rectangular carpet is 6x squared minus 12x. If the width of the carpet is 3x, what is the length? So let's think about area of a rectangle formula. It's area equals length times width. If I wanted to find the length, I would divide the area by the width. 
So that's what I'm going to do to find the length here. The area is 6x squared minus 12. And I'm going to divide that by the width, which is 3x. Oops, I forgot the x there. Okay, and since each, or since I'm just dividing by a monomial, I can just divide each term by that monomial. So this will really be 6x squared divided by 3x minus 12x divided by 3x. 6x squared divided by 3x is 2x, and negative 12x divided by 3x is negative 4. So the width would be 2x minus 4. Okay, let's look at this last one. It says find the quotient and we are dividing by a binomial. So we are going to need to do long division. So I am dividing x squared minus 10x plus 16 by x minus two. So we're gonna do, we're just gonna focus on the first terms. I'm gonna ask myself x times what would get me to x squared? and that would be x. And now I'm gonna multiply this by that answer I just got. So x times x is x squared, and x times negative two is negative two x. And now I'm going to subtract this whole group, and the way I'm going to subtract is by adding the opposite. So now I can just focus on combining what's right in front of me there, x squared minus x squared simplifies out. And then negative 10x plus 2x is negative 8x. And I'm gonna bring down the plus 16 and I'm going to repeat the process. I'm gonna ask myself, x times what would get me to negative 8x? Well, that would be a negative eight. So now I'm gonna multiply negative eight times x, which is negative 8x, and negative eight times two, negative two, which is positive 16. And I'm going to subtract that whole group and the way I subtract is by adding the opposite. And those are zero pairs, they zero out, so there is my final quotient, x minus eight.